Phillips and Mataseranu want access to the vault. And they know from their months of reconnaissance which man holds the keys. Assistant manager, John Villagrana. He's crouching behind the counter. To get to him, Mataseranu has to blast his way through a bulletproof security door. It's only designed to withstand small arms fire. And I can feel the, the nozzle of the rifle being placed on my back. He hit me with the, with the rifle on the side of the head like, I, need, I mean business. And I said, well, let's go to the vault. John unlocks the vault and opens the lockers, storing the cash. There's nothing like the amount of money the gunmen are expecting. To thwart criminals, Bank of America has been varying the times that it delivers cash. Today's supply has yet to arrive. I'm not emptying in the amount of cash that he, maybe he was expecting. I can feel it in his tone. Now he's getting a little more aggressive. He's saying, where's all of it? I want you to open up all of it, you know? He got upset. So what does he do? He opens fire in all the money that's in that cabin. And I could see he's not believing me because he's, he's, all of a sudden he got very quiet. But now he's putting his nozzle on me. And I was thinking, well, you know, this is, this is it. This is really it for me now. Wow, can't be. It's too soon, you know? I didn't even say goodbye to my daughter. I didn't. Outside, Officers call for every available ambulance. They fear multiple casualties. It's exactly eight minutes since the start of the robbery. Time for the gunmen to make their getaway. They've got $300,000, a fraction of what they'd expected. Mata Saranu exits the building's south door. Phillips, the north. Phillips expected a few police cars to be just arriving. He appears stunned to see dozens of officers waiting to shoot them down. They cover every escape route, blocking off junctions north and south of the bank. The police have cornered the robbers, but they've no idea what Phillips has in mind. He loathes the police, 